Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia, home to 1.4 million people. The city's architecture reflects the country's past as part of the Soviet Union. Georgia gained independence in 1991 and is now striving to become a member of the European Union. But it is still a country in transition. The Tbilisi-based pedestrian rights organization, Iare Pekit, is working to promote the rights of pedestrians in Georgia. In Georgia and other Soviet states, the United Nations Democracy Fund, UNDEF, supports the transition to democracy by funding local civil society organizations such as Iare Pekit. This is not a project about road safety. This is a project about giving people power, particularly pedestrian power. It's about putting people at the center of society rather than cars. In recent years, the volume of traffic on the streets of Tbilisi has grown at an alarming rate. Legislation to meet the increased road use hasn't moved at the same pace. The majority of people don't own cars, but pedestrians, including the elderly and people with disabilities, are never given priority on the streets. Traffic on Rastaveli Avenue, the central road that runs straight through the heart of the city, literally never stops. At each end, there is a badly lit, insecure and urine-infested underpass, the only option for pedestrians to cross. The same situation is true in several capital cities in post-Soviet states. Trying to separate a post-Soviet man from his car is like trying to separate Genghis Khan from his horse. He will not do it willingly. But what we hope is if we start from the young generation up, a new mindset can take hold. According to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Internal Affairs, road accidents in Georgia have been increasing steadily over the past three years, and many of the victims are pedestrians. As in most of the former Soviet Union, there is a lingering tendency to subjugate humans to machines, because owning a machine means having power. Walking or using public transport is considered inferior to driving. Georgia has not significantly updated its traffic laws since the Soviet time, so you could say that a lot of it is up, uh, outdated, and uh, the Soviet city planning and general urban design and the traffic regulation was more kind of car-focused, it did not emphasize the rights of the pedestrians. Erekla Rushadze is on the board of Iare Pekit, which means go by foot in English. With support from the UN Democracy Fund, Iare Pekit identifies urban planning priorities and represents pedestrian interests in the city's planning processes. Iare Pekit regularly organizes so-called ugly walk tours for concerned citizens to show how difficult it can be navigating the streets of Tbilisi and discuss how to bring about solutions. Erekla is the father of an eight-month-old baby girl, Anna, living in an apartment building in the center of Tbilisi. Moving around the city with a stroller is beset with difficulties. Erekla wants the streets to be safer for his daughter's future. With Iare Pekit, he's encouraging support for new legislation to improve road regulations and therefore make it easier for pedestrians negotiating the city's streets. Well, it's important to have this new law in order to avoid having a situation where there is no sidewalk left, no place left for pedestrians to walk, where sidewalks all around Tbilisi are occupied by cars. And this is the result of the fact that our current regulations and penalties are too mild. The current system relies on a private company, CT Park, to manage parking in the capital. But critics say the mild financial penalties for parking illegally make it largely ineffective. The new legislation, currently under discussion in Parliament, would introduce a penalty point system, so that once a driver accumulates a certain number of points, their driving licence is revoked. Guram Chaidza has used a wheelchair since he was paralysed following a road traffic accident in 1990. Once outside his home, he struggles to manoeuvre around the streets of Tbilisi. He often finds himself in situations like this. Erekla 
Polisprisa da memgoni es mtrole biromle biat dar hu es parking es tase bi tajarim debia. Resorting to calling the police to simply move around the streets is a daily reality for Graham. Activists hope that this can be changed by lobbying authorities to listen to the voice of the people and by campaigning for citizens' rights. One notable success was when a citizens' protest in 2013 stopped a large development in Vake Park, the largest green area in the centre of Tbilisi. People set up a camp here uh, in the woods and so eventually the company that was trying to uh, uh, start the construction, they backed off and eventually, uh, a couple of months ago, the court ruled that the construction permit was illegal or the construction will no longer take place. Sunday morning at the Iaripakit office in Tbilisi. Elena Magvalashvili, the organization's director, and her team are getting ready for a demonstration in front of the Georgian parliament. Today we are protesting with a group of different organizations, all working on different road safety issues. The poster says, uh, make road safety legal. So make it a law, turn it into the law. And uh, this law has been stuck between two tiers and no one is taking care of it. So our main request is to pressure the government, pressure the parliament to pass this road safety law. Decision makers at Tbilisi City Hall are now realizing that urban planning must become a priority. But now they face a new challenge changing people's mindsets. It's not only the law and the enforcement that is maybe our problem, but it's also the behavior of the participants of our citizens. But again, it must be done coupled with the media campaign that aims at raising the public awareness in a way to impact positively to all the participants of the mobility. The vision for the future of Tbilisi's younger generation is one where pedestrians won't fear moving around the city, where public transportation is improved, where it's safe to cross the road, and where drivers respect other road users. One where the municipality is responsive to the needs of its citizens and is able to listen to their voices for the benefit of all. When we started this project, there wasn't an organized movement for pedestrian empowerment in Georgia, and I think very little in the post-Soviet space as a whole. What we hoped in generating this project was that it could not only give the people of Tbilisi the voice they need to empower themselves, but also to serve as a model for similar projects in other countries of the region. Through awareness-raising activities by civil society organizations, such as Iari Pakit, Georgia's future generations will be better informed and more mindful about traffic rules and pedestrians' rights. And humans will be considered the masters of the machines, not vice versa.